Hi everyone, Chris here, and for the last five days I've been using this guy. This is the Redmi Note 9T. You're probably aware of this phone. It offers really good spec for the price point. So selling here in Europe started out at 199 euros, and then later on it's going to be 229. Fantastic value for money for what it offers. So the spec of it, very, very good. The Dimensity 800U, it's a great chipset, paired up with four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage is the base model right here with UFS 2.1 storage, or you can get the 128 gigabyte version with UFS 2.2. Now that storage is very fast as you'll see later on in this video, but we can expand upon it with micro SD card support. It supports two nano SIMs, all your LTE bands and then the 5G bands, the important ones for Europe, are all covered there as well. We have a large 5,000 milliamp hour battery, so this phone will go for about two days for most people. And good charging rate of 18 watts. It's not the fastest out there, but it will fully charge in about two hours. I'll give you the exact time in this review. 48 megapixel rear camera, 13 megapixel front camera with the cutout and that 6.53 inch IPS screen. Inside the box of the Note 9T here, you will find a SIM tray tool, a little bit of paperwork, it's just a user guide and whatnot, and this here, which is our TPU case they do supply. So great having this in the box. It covers all the ports well. There is a cutout for the side fingerprint reader and a raised lip for where the camera module is and the glass. The charger included inside the box, this one is rated to 22.5 watts and it'll take just over two hours to fully charge the 5,000 milliamp hour battery. But I'll give you the exact time in this review. And here we have our USB to Type-C cable. Onto our build and design now. So this one has a side fingerprint reader here. You can see with the volume up and down. So all plastic build. It is solid, it does feel good in hand, but it doesn't feel quite as good as the Mi 10 T Lite that I've also reviewed in the channel. So I'll demonstrate the unlocking speed on this one. It's not the fastest. It's capacitive, so it's always on. And it's not too bad. I think it's the animation that lets it down a little bit, but you see there's that split second where it is black and then everything comes in, so, but it is accurate, which is one of the main things there that you want in a fingerprint reader. We do have face unlocking with our front camera as well. This is 13 megapixels, f2.25, and the bezels around the 6.5 inch screen, they are not too bad. It's plastic around here too, so all plastic build. On the right hand side, we have our SIM tray. So this one does have a rubber gasket around it. There is some splash resistance according to Xiaomi. It takes two micro SIMs, and a micro SD card, up to 128 gigabytes I have tested with no problems. And the camera's on the rear, so we have a main 48 megapixel sensor. This one does have then two backup cameras. Well, one is for depth and the other's macro. And really, I don't think they should have gone with this choice. I think instead of those two two megapixel cameras, you know how I am with these cameras. I would have preferred an ultra wide instead. I think would have been a lot more practical. Now that main camera has an aperture of f 1.79. Up the top of the Note 9T, we have a little port here for the secondary speaker. So that's in the earpiece. Sound comes out of this. IR transmitter, secondary mic used in calls and in video. Now the thickness is just over nine millimeters. It's not bad considering it has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery inside this. Down the bottom, you'll find a 3.5 millimeter headphone out, microphone, and our loudspeaker. A loudspeaker sample will be supplied in this in-depth review. This Type-C port here does support 18 watts, even though the charger in the box is 22.5. Now the quality out of this 3.5 millimeter is not bad, but it doesn't seem to be quite as good to my ears as their Qualcomm audio. With the Qualcomm chips, this sounds a little bit better to me. And yes, this phone does support FM radio. Onto the screen now, so this one is an IPS panel. We expect this, of course, at this price point. We're not sadly gonna get AMOLED. That would have been really good if we had an OLED screen, of course, but it's not gonna happen. So this is a full HD plus resolution. We have the cutout down here. Now at certain angles, when you look at the cutout, you will see dimmer pixels around it. This is a very common trait with the IPS panels. And down the bottom with the bottom chin, it dims off a little bit. Now this is not really a big issue. I am very fussy with my displays. And it's a very minor thing that you normally only see when you have a same constant image. So just a, for example, just a white image, completely white, you'll notice it maybe a little bit. The screen is brighter than their claim. So they say it should be about 450 nits. Now I am measuring with my meter here, a peak maximum for whites 
of 530 nits of brightness. So this is good. You can make it out in direct sunlight. The screen protector that comes on it, already pre-applied, doesn't make it the most clearest, of course, in sunlight. Sunlight, you see a few more fingerprints and smudges on it, but overall, it's a good screen. Now, touch response is good on this screen. I have not experienced any problems with the touch lagging or ghost touches or any issues. So overall, for the price, the category of the phone, it's a decent IPS panel they have gone with Xiaomi. The Note 9T is running Android 10, MIUI 12, and we're not on Android 11 just yet, but that should come soon in the future. So I have the 128 gigabyte version with UFS 2.2 storage. If you buy the 64 gigabyte version, that is UFS 2.1, but not too much of a difference there with the speeds. This one will be marginally faster. Later on, I'll show you the actual drive speeds of this one. Security patch level is January this year, which is great. And what about the performance? So this ROM is very, very good. So taking a look at your recent apps, go into gallery, everything does load in very, very fast with this. And I haven't really seen any noticeable issues with any lag or slowdown whatsoever. It is a very quick ROM. And I would say for the price, it definitely is one of the fastest mobiles out there considering it's a very good chipset, this dimensity it has in here, the 800U. So the phone is very fast, it is fluid, great performance. Now notifications, they're all pulling through, no issues with that. And I've placed some calls as I have my main SIM, SIM card in this. So the call quality is excellent, it's fine. It's just like any other phone out there, I've experienced no issues. I'm currently on LTE Band 20. There is also 5G support with this one. So to run through some of the important things that I like to cover, our battery life. So first up, the charge time. To go from 4% to 100%, was 121 minutes. So just a fraction over two hours to fully charge the 5,000 milliamp hour battery with its 18 watts maximum charge rate that it has. Now that battery was very, very good here. A solid performance here, ran for 14 hours and 56 minutes, almost 15 hours at 200 nits of brightness. I calibrate the screens, of course, before I do this test. And that puts it right up there. That is an excellent score. But of course, it's a 60 hertz screen. So that does favor it. But good battery life, solid performance, two days for, I would say, most people out there, unless you're a very, very heavy user. Now, the wireless does work well. The range is good, but our maximum speeds do cap out at 200 megabits per second. I have seen this before on these lower chipsets. It just It's a cap that they have that we cannot surpass this. So if you need faster, you need to look at mid-range or flagship phones if you want very, very fast wireless transfer speeds going through the phone. So two meters of accuracy here, and even one meter of accuracy is what I've seen on this phone. So the GPS does work well. It normally has a green signal average strength, which is the more important figure here too as well. And overall, it's not like the MediaTek GPS we used to have a few years ago. That was terrible. And we have a wide vine level one cert, so Netflix and full HD, Amazon Prime Video, and Disney Plus all working on this phone. Camera 2 API support is there, level three. This is the maximum, this is what we want. But you need to bear in mind that this is a MediaTek phone and that means it might be a little bit difficult to find a good stable Gcam port for this one if you wanted a different style and quality of photo that is compared to the stock cameras. Internal storage here is impressive. This is really good. Very, very fast speeds, and this is bettering even some flagships. Many flagships out there, this will give you better performance, the storage. So excellent sequential reads and writes. The random reads and the random writes are also very, very high here. So we're going to have no bottleneck at all from this system storage. It is really quite good. The Antutu score as well for the price of this phone, selling the 64 gigabyte model in Europe at least, has been selling or still is 499 euros. It will then be 229. Even at that price, that is still very good performance here out of the Dimensity 800U. It is excellent, really good. So onto some of the bad things with the ROM here, that when you install apps, if you do nothing, this is out of the box experience. You install an application, I installed Antutu here, and what happened, adverts will be displayed. And this is throughout the system apps, out of the box, this is gonna happen, okay? And there's quite a lot of bloatware too, which I'll get onto, but we have a lot of free space here with the 128 gigabyte version. 64 will, will be less, of course, but you do have the micro SD card support on this. But here are some of the bloatware apps. So I counted 
in total, I think it was over 20. No, it was about 22 different bloatware apps that I would consider as bloat that you need to just spend five minutes to go and uninstall and remove them all. You go into system, apps, uninstall, and you can luckily from there select all of them. So 1.68 gigabytes of just junk that is pre-installed on this phone. I really wish that Xiaomi would cut back on this. I know they do deals with these companies. They get money out of this for them to have their apps pre-installed. It's kind of annoying. So that's what it's like when you first boot it up, you're going to see all of this junk present on the phone. And a dual gaming performance. So not too bad here from the Dimensity 800U. This game is Genshin Impact. I have it set on the medium resolution and the rest is lower settings apart from 60 frames per second. I'll just show you here quickly. So under settings, graphics, those are the changes I have made. Now, when you first get into the game, like with any mobile or tablet, I have noticed this, that at first it will be a little bit stuttery and that seems to settle down once you start playing for a little bit. It seems to be something to do with caching with this game being just so re resource intensive, such a heavy game. Now, there were a few guys just up here that I wanted to attack and they've just disappeared, gone on me. Oh, there they are. Okay, and I'll show you that you probably see a couple of stutters and lag just now and then. But overall, the gameplay is it's pretty smooth, and it does look good on the setting. Now, if you want it to be a little bit smoother, you're going to, of course, just lower it down to the absolute lowest settings. Let's have a look now at Call of Duty performance. So performance here in Call of Duty is very good. I have it on the medium preset for the graphics and the high frame rate. It's very smooth. It's playable. I have now five kills getting down towards the end of the game here, and hopefully I can survive a little bit longer. But the performance, it's flawless, it's keeping up, there has been no major lags, nothing like that, so the gameplay for this game is really good. So what I am going to do now is play a few more rounds, a little bit more of Genshin Impact, really push it hard for one hour, and I'll report back on the thermals. So just over one hour now of gaming, and we're up to almost 39 degrees on the front of the screen, ambient temperatures here in the room are uh, about 22 degrees the air, but the table is only about 17 degrees, as you can see. Just flip it over to, to take a look at the rear. That's where it feels the warmest. And that is getting up to about the same. Well, it was looking like it's going to reach almost 40 degrees. We're getting there eventually, but these thermals are very good after one hour of demanding games like Call of Duty and Genshin Impact. So we have great loudspeakers in this phone, dual loudspeakers, because there is one down here, then the earpiece doubles up as the secondary loudspeaker. Good immersion for gaming, good loudness to them, tiny bit of bass. Here is a sample at 100% volume. Moving over to our cameras now. So we have a front-facing 13 megapixel camera and it does have electronic image stabilization, which is great. Xiaomi has finally been doing this now for a while. Audio bitrate is decent too. It's 256 kilobits per second. Now the crop on it is a little bit close. My arm isn't fully extended out. That would be somewhere about here. And moving around quickly here, we're not seeing too much of a problem with that stabilization, that it's not causing any rolling shutter or anything like that. So a little jog ahead too, just to test out the stabilization. Overall for 1080p quality, not too bad. Now 4K video, which I'll show you now, does not sadly have at the time of this video any electronic image stabilization. So with 4K, 30 frames per second maximum. If you want the electronic image stabilization, you have to shoot in 1080p. Then we have it with this Dimensity 800U. I'm not too sure if it's a limitation of the chipset, or it's the Xiaomi have not implemented it. I think it's that. I don't think it's the chipset that's the problem here. So there is no ultra wide camera, just the 48 here, and then we have the macro sensor too as well. The video is sharp, it's just that lack of stabilization. Really, you do need to use a gimbal in order to get smooth, steady footage.
All right, so camera performance, the main camera at daytime takes a good photo. Most phones out there will, even some really cheap $100 ones will, okay? Low light performance, a little bit of grains coming in, it's not wonderful performance there. And then we have the two megapixel macro. Why on earth is it there? I don't think they should be doing this, or the depth camera. A single camera for portrait modes can normally do the stitching with the software just fine, so we don't actually need that. I would have preferred Xiaomi put the money from those two two megapixel cameras into at least an eight megapixel ultra wide or even a 13 megapixel one if they could, I think would have been a lot better, more practical and more people would use that more than say a macro. So the build quality, yes, it's all plastic, but it is solid. It does feel reasonably good in hand. It is about 200 grams. The weight is good considering it has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Battery time, runtime of about two days for most people. Standby drain seems to also be good. Dual SIM support, 5G support there too as well, as well as all your LTE bands is great. And then the micro SD card support with it. Now the charging time isn't super quick. It's around just over two hours as I showed you, but I think it's okay considering the battery capacity. The screen as well is decent for an IPS for the price that this sells for. And then the performance, internal storage speeds are great. The Dimensity 800U is a very, very good chipset. It's great. It doesn't really show any throttling and the thermals are excellent on this. MediaTek have really stepped things up last year with these Dimensity chips and I'm looking forward to their new series of course that they will be releasing, I believe, this year. So all up, the Redmi Note 9T, yes, does get a thumbs up from me. It's not all amazing. That ultra wide camera should be there and then the bloatware as well. There's quite a bit on board there. So Xiaomi, I hope that you can start to tone down a little bit on at least the global ROMs here. The global ROMs just have so much bloatware that really does need to change. And I'll see you in the next review. Thank you so much for watching.